Hey guys, it's Amy with 804 Sycamore. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I'm really excited to show you how to make your own bench. Now this bench style, it's kind of a, a vintage inspired, worn wood, rustic look, which I absolutely love. I love that warm wood tone. I like it to not be perfect, have a couple uh, dents and bruises. So um, I'm going to show you just how easy it is with some basic tools. And all I had to buy was a two by four. I already had some scrap wood. Otherwise, you'll want to buy a 2x10, 2x8, or 2x12, just depending on the depth of the bench you want. Um, and we're going to rough it up using some tools that are typical in the garage too, and give it a really nice worn weathered look. So please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you like DIY and decorating inspiration, and let's get going. My first step was to go ahead and mark my wood just to get started cutting. This is a 2 by 12 board and I wanted it to be 5 feet long. So I marked my two spots, drew my line, and I was ready to go. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It can be any size you want, um, which is a great thing about DIY. And then my 2 by 4 I'm going to use that for all four legs and two supports. And then I use a 1 by 2 board as my um, horizontal support between the two leg supports. So um, that one I didn't cut yet because I wasn't ready to. That's kind of, um, that happens after the legs are installed in the support. So after you mark, measure and mark, go ahead and make your cuts. I just went ahead and did some rough cuts. I knew that I wanted my legs to be 18 inches long. And so I cut these about 20 inches. And I did that because I later on, you'll see, I do some 10 degree angles because I didn't want the legs to just be straight up and down at 90 degree angles. I wanted them to uh, angle out just a little bit for a more natural look. And I like that vintage look as well. So I'm using this DeWalt miter saw. I absolutely love it. It's on this really handy, um, stand that collapses really easily and so I can put it away and it saves lots of space. I'm just using the clamp technique to try to get all my boards the same so I don't have to measure a bunch of times. And now I'm ready to go ahead and add that 10 degree angle. Um, I do it on both sides the exact same direction so it kind of looks like a parallelogram when you set it up. Um, right now I'm just um, lining up the boards and then marking the next spot um, it to me this is easier than measuring but of course you can measure each one if that's your thing i just kind of like to feel the edge of the wood when i can feel that it's um, the exact same then i make my cut and line it up so um, <clears throat> and of course at the very end i tested to make sure all four were the same um, so I wouldn't have any wobbling going on. And of course I did have just a little bit, but that was corrected with a little um, pad to go under just one leg. I think my bench, the wood may have been a little off or maybe one of my supports was too tight. I'm not sure, um, but a little wobble is just fine and easy to correct. So now I'm cutting my uh, two, two by 12 board and um, it's it was just some extra wood I had over left over um, from my rolling cart design and I will link that below too I, in the description I think you might like that. This is my pocket hole jig. It is so ergonomic. It has saved my shoulder big time and I am making two pocket, I'm drilling two pocket holes on each leg. Now the pocket holes will go inside the legs because we don't want you to see them from the outside and so after you drill your eight pocket holes you are ready to set up and, and line up where they're gonna go. To mark uh, my leg spots, now I didn't have to do this at this point, but I, um, I just wanted to and it didn't hurt anything. So I flipped the board over so I'm on the underside and I marked in 10 inches on each side and then go ahead and draw a line. I went all the way across, um, but you don't need to go all the way across. Um, so I went 10 inches in and then I measured two and a quarter inches from the edge. And this is going to be, these are the lines where I'm going to set each leg 
so I can attach it with some two inch screws. Um, you can adjust these uh, locations if you want. I um, felt comfortable with this for the function of the bench, the stability, and also um, aesthetically how it looked where the legs were located, but um, you can uh, customize this part if you'd like. So before you attach the legs, we're going to age the bench. Um, it just seemed easier to do that. And so I'm using a chisel to um, chisel away those really hard edges. I don't care if they're perfectly rounded. I, in fact, I want them very uneven and I want it to look like um, natural wear and tear. And it was really fun and it went by pretty quick. Just be really careful. Chisels are very sharp and can be dangerous. After all your corners are rounded out, now you want to go ahead and take your jigsaw. Be careful with this too. Um, you can see I'm just really hitting the blade up against the wood. No rhyme or reason. I want to distress the edges, especially the, the fresh cut ends. I want to make sure that those don't look like perfect fresh cut ends. So um, make sure you're wearing safety equipment and just taking extra care. This video, um, I sped it up. So it looks like I'm going fast, but I'm actually really taking my time. So you can see all the rough spot. Don't, don't worry. We are going to sand that later, but I just kind of want to show you how I just, just went for it. Um, no rhyme or reason. I just wanted it to look distressed. Now the third step is using this metal brush. It's an attachment for your drill gun. And this is a two inch metal um, bristle. And this was actually a lot of fun. And again, it's not perfect. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just putting grooves and making um, some worn out spots. And then finally, you're going to go ahead and sand. And this is getting off all the rough edges. It's smoothing things out. It's adding another layer of aging your wood and distressing it, um, wearing it down, um, smoothing it as it would be with normal um, age. So I started with an 80 grit just to really rough it up and add some more age. And then I did 120. And then later on, I did 220 after staining, which we'll talk about later. So attaching your legs, you guys, make sure you use wood glue and having a helper to hold the leg is so helpful. It's at a 10 degree angle and I couldn't get clamps in here. And so having someone hold it was perfect. And then I just drill straight down into my, my Craig holes. And that's the joinery technique for this. Um, make sure you check your torque so you can get it just right. Now you're going to want to cut your um, leg support and I just took leftover 2x4 that I had and I just used that um, that piece of 2x4 to give me the, the height that I wanted, drew my marks and then I cut it. Um, I believe it turned out to be 10 degree angles but this way I have the, the perfect fit and then I just went ahead and duplicated and made the same cuts for my other support. Now your supports, um, you can drill them straight. I went ahead and added some pocket holes because I felt like um, it, it would be easy and um, more hidden. And so I'm drilling the pocket holes on the bottom of the support. Um, again, it's a, it's a tight fit though, so you can drill straight um, if you'd like. But what I did is I went and found um, the center of the leg and then I measured the center of the two by four so I could kind of line them up and make sure my support was as close to center as possible. I wasn't um, super stressed about it being absolutely perfect, but I lined it up as close as I could. And then I just used um, some screws. And this is where um, maybe a different drill gun would come in handy. I, I went ahead and just drilled them by hand. Um, because it was, it's kind of a tight, narrow spot to get in, but with the pocket holes already started, it was, uh, it was pretty easy to get in there. So um, I feel like this is a really strong joint, and 
um, it's very secure. Now with the supports in place, you can measure the um, width in between and then cut that one by two. Um, and then I wanted to find the middle of the one by two. I drilled um, a pilot hole in the middle of the support and then I just got a start on the screw so that I could, um, you know, meet the, I overscrewed a little bit so I had to unscrew it. And then I just line up the one by two and drilled it in place. Um, I could have recessed the screw heads and covered them up, but um, I wasn't picky about it and it didn't matter that much to me. Now that my bench is completely constructed, I decided to stain it because I wanted that vintage rustic look and I'm using Farmhouse Color Stain by Rovendwell. It has virtually no odor and it has a beautiful warm and cool tone. Now my, my two by fours are a little bit red, but it's okay because the Rovendwell stain, it warms it up nicely and it really gives all of my wood a nice even tone. Um, for the this farmhouse stain color, the instructions say to let it sit 30 minutes before applying any additional layers, but one layer is dark enough for me because my next step I'm trying to lighten it, but you can do however many layers you would like. Here is a little close-up showing the stain pretty dry. I, it's not absolutely perfect, but my next step is going to cover any little tiny grooves that didn't get the stain. This is the whitewash stain effect. Um, now for the instructions on this one, you are going to want to leave it on several minutes. And I'm just using pretty much the cheapest brush I could get at my local hardware store. Um, I'm still brushing it with the grain in the direction of the grain, um, but I don't want to wipe it off too soon. So um, I did quite a bit before I took my staining sponge and wiped it to really smooth it, get any excess. And um, I really like the way it turns out. It um, it lets some grays show through, it lightens and brightens, but it also adds that nice weathered aged look, which is what I was going for. So um, don't get too impatient if you do this step, really just get um, a lot of the whitewash on there, nice and e as even as you can, and get it all into the grooves, and then leave it on a few minutes before you wipe it off. But make sure you do wipe it off. Here I am setting up the bench in our entryway. We are going to use this bench as extra seating at the dining table. I'd like to put it at the end of our bed at some point. Um, it could even be used outside, but I just love it. I love how it's heavy and sturdy and it looks very cool. Um, I hope you like this video too. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to see some close-ups, go to my blog at 804sycamore.com. Thanks so much for watching.